Alright, so this is a quick, I guess, beginner install video for how to install Pi AUI Suite. And that includes voice command and a bunch of other uh, scripts I've written, uh, which you'll need for, uh, I mean, if you're interested in using any of this. So this is how to install it. So I'm on my blog here. There's going to be a dedicated page to how to install and update this once I finish this video, but for now there's none. So you can go to any of my, like, voice commands or play YouTube videos or, like, really most of the Raspberry Pi stuff, and you'll get these install instructions. So, I'm doing this on a Fedora machine. It'll work on 64-bit machines, Raspberry Pis, and I believe 32-bit uh, machines. I haven't verified, but I believe so. So it's the same um, commands. However, on Fedora, which is what I'm using, there's not apt-git, there's yum. So, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna run this command right here, and you're press enter. I don't have app git, so it's obviously going to give me an error. See, command not found, but that's good for you. You need to install that. And you also should probably make sure your machine's up to date. I have a page on how to do that, but basically you're going to run sudo app git update and sudo app git dash y upgrade and and sudo reboot. And you're going to do all three of those. And you can do them one at a time. You can do them with a double ampersand. It's whatever. It's up to you. So once that's all done, you're rebooted, your system's up to date, like everything's set, you have Git installed, now we're going to use Git clone and we're going to grab the Pi UI suite. So this grabs all the source code and the binaries and the install scripts. So we're going to copy that into your terminal. Also, like a terminal is easy to open, you Google it uh, and you'll figure it out. Like it's Linux, you need to, it's, it's, it might be foreboding at first, but it's not it's not that bad so you're gonna copy this this command in there get clone so it's gonna say cloning into blank that's the folder it's cloning into so it's cloning into pi AU I suite so we're gonna see CD in the pi AUI suite you see there's a bunch of stuff here the license the make file the readme the first thing you're gonna do cat readme you're gonna read the readme like it will tell you a lot of things in here so it'll tell you what it requires the things it requires a uh, command to tell you which dependencies you might need to install. You don't need to run this command manually, it will do this actually in the install script, but just in case. And then I'll give you a brief description and a post on my blog about each one, which will tell you a lot of stuff. For each one, there's a man page on there, um, there will be comments with questions and concerns and, and problems that you might have also had, so please look at those. Uh, I mean, you can always feel free to contact me. My contact information is on here. But uh, try to at least read through the README and look at those first. So there's also the license. You should look at the license, but it's your generic GPL license with the clause that if you meet me and you like my software, you should buy me a drink. Um, and that's where, somewhere near the top. This is a long license. I didn't know this license was this long. You should probably read one of these at one point in your life just because. Um, so now we should cd into install and if you ls there you see you have three c commands now you should be able to type in and like auto tab complete um, because git the way it works it should keep your files as, as, as executable if it doesn't see it's got that rwx there if it doesn't you can always do chmod plus x star and we're gonna make everything executable in this folder because they're all supposed to be executable anyways so now and that's what this says, cd pi UI, aui suite install. And now it just says dot slash install aui suite. So you should install this as the user you're going to use it as. You don't need to sudo install it. You need to have sudo permissions as it is now. I will eventually change this for those of you who want to use prefix and don't have user or sudo, sudo privileges. But you don't need to sudo it outright because then it might install you as, as in your root folders. And then you have to run everything as root. It's kind of a pain in the ass. You don't need to do that. So. You're going to type dot slash install AUI suite. Now we're going to press enter. So it says installing AUI suite by Stephen Hinkson. That's me. If you have issues, visit blank this blog or email me at blank. This is my email address. Like That's my personal email address. I get back within a couple days. Pester me, ask me questions. Like It's fine. I'm okay with that. That's why I have a PayPal and ads. They don't at all support me in any way, shape, or form, but... Um, I still like like to email people and I, I always try to respond. So if you have any questions or problems or concerns or 
help with something or uh, ideas for more stuff, feel free to email me. Just make sure you read through this stuff first and, and try these things out first. So uh, the first thing it's going to say is install dependencies, yes or no. These are necessary for any of the options. You should probably yes, press Y unless you absolutely know you have them. So I know I have them, and it uses that git, so I'm going to press no. You're going to press yes. You're going to press the Y key and hit enter. I'm going to press N and hit enter. So now it's going to go through each part of this Pi AUI suite. Now there's argument on whether I should or shouldn't package these together, but I packaged them together for the start and for consistency's sake, and because they all build off each other fairly well, I decided to continue packaging them together. So um, they each have their own blog post, and I encourage you to read through on the in the readme and read the blog post about what each does, because uh, you might or might not want them, and it's kind of good to know beforehand. So play video is really nice. It indexes your movies and TV shows if you're using it as a media server in order to quickly find, randomize, and or play them. So it can play multiple videos in a row. It can search through videos, and it's really nice. That's how I play videos in my videos when I say, Brozy or Jarvis, play this. Like That's how it does it. I mean, it's not XBMC. It's not pretty as of yet. We're working on it. Um, but it's, it's useful. So we're going to press Y here. Y. Press Enter. So it says installing play video. That's how you know it's confirming. Enter movie video root folder location. So depending on your system, this is where all your movies are. You can put them in whatever root folder. If you're not that organized and they're somewhere in like slash media, you can just type, type in slash media. That's fine. Um, it'll only select movie files from that hard drive. Movies and, and I should say audio. It'll, it'll select like MP3s as well. But it'll narrow it down. It's not going to try to play a docx file. So um, mine's going to be in slash home slash d slash documents. And it's going to ask for my pseudo password. I'm going to type it in. OK, if it gives you this running command not found, it does that. I need to fix it. I haven't got around to it. Um, it doesn't affect the proper install, so don't worry about it. Um, so now it says done installing play video. So it's going to make this nice cron script for you and update every day at midnight. And it's got all your videos and stuff. So install downloader. This script automates the downloads of tournaments. Example, download Weezy finds and downloads the newest Debbie and Weezy image. Like generic legal disclaimer, don't download things illegally. This may be different based on your country, etc., etc. I don't really care. Um, we're going to say yes. So installing downloader script. Enter host. Example, localhost. This is probably what it is. I should preface this, and I probably should have put this in the install script. It uses transmission daemon and transmission remote. So transmission daemon, um, there's a whole blog post on this. Uh, you can find it in the readme. It's going to set up a nice little like web-based app that lets you torrent things. So it's going to be at localhost, unless you change something crazy. Enter port. The default's 9091. So we're going to say 9091. Enter the username. My username is going to be Steve. Yours is probably going to be Pi, so we'll type in Pi. Enter the password. This is going to be like whatever your password is. My, like We're going to say it's password, even though it's awful and it shouldn't be. So then it's done. Done, in, done installing. So now it says install gtext command, Google Voice text command system, yes or no. This installs gtext command. This uses Google Voice to check for system commands for your, from your number with a passcode. This was on Hackaday and Lifehacker. I'm sure most of you have seen it. Um, if not, you should. It's kind of cool. There are people who argue it's unsafe, but they really don't know what they're talking about. Trust me, like, it, unless you have a GSM clone, which is a couple thousand dollars. So if you work for someone high up in government or you're a high level corporate employee and you're using a corporate system, don't do it. But for a personal use, like, it's not something you should worry about. I mean, it costs thousands of thousands of dollars and they have to get physical access to your phone to break this. So. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I like it. It's super convenient, especially if you don't have a smartphone. So you basically can text yourself commands with this custom passphrase, and uh, your Raspberry Pi pulls and then checks and runs these commands. And it also checks for people who try to spoof you. It checks for all these things. SMS spoofing is a lot harder than most people think. Google Voice does some nice little things. The, the SMS spoofing most people know and love doesn't actually spoof the number. It's uh, actually a little trick that phones do. So this doesn't do that. It uses Google Voice. Google Voice has built-in spoof prevention. I have even more on top of that. So, you know, if you have professional worries, go ahead and contact me, and we can discuss them. And if anyone can break this, like, I would be very impressed. I'd probably give out a cash reward. Please do so and, like, show me, and that would be awesome. But in the meantime, you should 
if you want this, it's very safe to trust. So, I mean, there's no reason not to say yes. So, if you're not going to use it, you don't need it. Because uh, it does pull every two minutes. But if you are going to use it like I do, uh, you know, you're going to text from the grocery store or something to download something. It's really useful. So, press Y. Enter your Google Voice username. I apologize for all the international people, like everyone in the UK and like, Australia and etc. Like, Google Voice isn't there. Like, I'm sorry, Google hasn't uh, allowed that. Hopefully they will within the next couple of years. So you can all just press no instead of yes on Gtextman. So we'll enter our Google Voice username. You can put um, your email address or you can just put, so I have a custom me at stephenhickson.com. It's custom Google um, supported. But you can, if you have a Gmail, you can put just your Gmail without the um, email address. It doesn't matter. So enter my password. My password is going to be password again. Enter your command keyboard. Keyword. So this will precede every valid command. So on the blog post, when you look at it, it'll say like command download this. So we're gonna say something like secret. Like you can put anything you want, and it's gonna be have to be before that. Enter your valid number. So this is going to be your phone number. So mine's gonna be like one five 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 three 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 four 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 four, and that's the number to accept commands from. So that's gonna be my personal phone number. So that's done installing. You don't have to give it your Google Voice number. It'll figure that out to, up yourself. So then it's going to ask you to install GB API. It's also Google Voice, so if you're international, go ahead and skip this. I'm sorry. This is really cool. It actually allows you, instead of running commands or something like that built in, it actually allows you to send and receive and check text messages. And it also does contact stuff. So it's really cool for home autom automation because instead of having to write your own or use something like Twilio, which costs money, or rely on anything like that, you can, you know, just call GBA API with these flags, and you can use man GBA API or look on the blog post to see like how it works, like what flags you need to send it. But basically, it'll, you can use it like, say you have uh, a home alarm system and you want to text you every time the door opens. Like that's really easy with this. So we're gonna go ahead and install that in case we ever want to use it too. It doesn't run all the time; it just runs when you run GBA API. So it's the same thing. Why do I do this if you type in both? Because this uses less information, the other one's more specific. So we're going to do that again. Me at stephenhickson.com. My password is password. And then that's done. That's all GB API needs. Install YouTube scripts. So first of all, for those of you using the Raspberry Pi browser scripting options, I've been changing that. I'm probably going to continue changing that a lot. I apologize. Things won't be the same. I'm trying to get it to work so that it replaces the actual video itself with a button that says play, but unfortunately YouTube keeps overriding my changes, so as of now it flashes up a play button and removes it, or at least on my, my alpha version that you guys don't have. So the current version as of this video um, puts up a little button that says OMX on the far left hand side and you'll see it scroll with you. So I replaced their old system that replaced the URLs because it wasn't working, it wasn't letting you go to the second page of searches and stuff like that. So, I mean, keep updated with the blog, it's going to tell you all the changes. I'm probably not going to make a new video for every little change for the install, so um, keep up with that and it'll tell you what's going on, and like I said, you feel free to contact me and I'll explain it. So, if you're using Midori, like, look at that, and also make sure you enable user scripts. There's a post on how to do that in the blog, but you can search Midori, enable user scripts, there's a lot of options. You have to do that first. So we're going to say yes, because this also includes YouTube, YouTube Safe, YouTube Downloader, and other scripts. So you can download, stream, and browse the videos. I actually use this on all my laptops at this point. I replace OMX Player with VLC on Fedora because uh, it's really nice, and it gets around the YouTube, um, or at least uh, Verizon, I think. They, they do this weird thing where they mess with the YouTube videos. Uh, and you can edit your host file and do some other things to kind of get rid of it. But this is nice because it streams them at 1080p, like directly to DLC, and you don't have to worry about flash ads or any of that. So we'll tape in yes. So it might give you a warning, the mime warnings. That's when, uh, and you, if you can see, that has nothing to do with my stuff at all. Um, don't worry about that. That's uh, used with the update desktop database file, and I mean, they're old ones that they discourage but still work. So I don't use them but other things you use might do it, so just don't worry about it. So, so say it says update a YouTube do downloader, so it gets YouTube downloader, all that, that's good. So install voice command. This is my, in my opinion, the coolest script. It's probably what most of you are here. I'm sorry it's at the end, like, it's the newest one I have. So, um, 
Basically, customizable voice control system uses Google speech recognition and text Google speech to text to listen to you, respond to you, and read commands based on what you say. There are a lot of people who are asking on getting a solution that doesn't use Google. Um, I did. That was what it was originally. It was nowhere near as good. And I, like, you can go back and you can look in the earliest revisions of GitHub, and you can get that version if you want. Um, I'm not gonna like officially support it though, so um, I'm not gonna like make an install script that does that because it's like Pocket Sphinx is all right, but it's nowhere good as a Google Google Speech is just it's really really good system. It's very responsive and it gets most of the things you do. So that's why I use that like quick brief overview. Um, I'm sorry if your internet connection isn't good enough. Like, yeah, that sucks, and it's really awesome to kind of see those things but not be able to use them is is kind of bad. Um, I apologize. I'll keep looking into other options, but until I see something that really rivals it, I'm not going to switch. So we're going to say yes. Would I like voice command to try to set itself up? So this is important. So if you don't have, um, you know, like if you have weird microphone options and et cetera, and et cetera, you, you kind of need this. So it runs voice command s, which is in the blog. You can see that. It's going to try to set itself up manually. So here where it asks if we want voice command to set itself up, normally you would press yes. So that runs the command voice command dash s. It sets everything up. Because it can also be done manually and because it's kind of a large thing, I'm going to do it in its own video. So go to my video, see the next one. I also put a link up here and you can see what that is. So I'm going to press no. And it tells you how you can do it manually and then you're done. You can use all these scripts like you can do play and there it is. You can do voice command, there it is. You can do GBAPI, and there it is. And now you have man pages for this. So man voice command. Look at that. Like a lot of information. Like read it. It tells you a good bit. And then if you still don't get something, then contact me. You have man play video. Like you have man GBAPI. Uh, you have a lot of man pages. So if you ever need help, that's the way to go. And if that still doesn't get you, then the blog, then email me or comment in the blog or do whatever you uh, feel is necessary. So go ahead and see the next video for voice command dash s. And you can hit yes, it's going to do the same thing. Just uh, see the next video so you know if you need help at all. All right, thanks.